morning everybody. I'm sorry about the tight squeeze. We are delighted that so many of you have come. We weren't expecting so many people, so apologies for the, uh, for the, the crowded space. Um, some of you may have already got the press release, but this morning we'd just like to announce to you that uh, Sion of Arda Corporation have formed a wholly owned subsidiary in Turkey, which is going to be called TR Jet. TR Jet will be the organisation through which we uh, launch the Turkish Regional Aircraft Programme. That will start with the relaunch of the Dornier 328 as the TRJ 328 aeroplane with uh, some updates and some modifications to uh, improve the aeroplane from its current uh, situation. And we will also be starting work on the 628, the TRJ 628 aeroplane, um, being designed, developed, produced, uh, and manufactured in Turkey. Um, as Jane said, I have Cem Ugo here. Cem is going to be representative of TR Jet. Um, and what we'd like to do now is uh, throw the floor open to any questions that you may have for the next 10, 15, 20 minutes. Although, since there's so many of you, uh, maybe a little longer. So. Um, I'll open the floor, and uh, Jane, I'll let you adjudicate who you select <laughs> to, uh, to speak first. Oh. Uh, does anyone have questions they'd like to put today about the project? Yes, Rod. What do you see, see as the primary market for the, uh, the new aircraft? Well, if we're just talking about the 328 first, which is really where we're launching, I mean, I, I guess I see two elements of the 328. Uh, first, Whilst it's commonly talked about that this is a dying market for the 30 to 50 seat arena, I think we have a different view uh, to that, and probably you've seen uh, some of my comments on that already. Um, who's not that radio off? Thank you. Um, we have some uh, different views. There are nearly 5,000 aeroplanes still in the 30 to 50 seat uh, sector operating at the moment. Our view is that those aeroplanes will need to be replaced, not necessarily replaced with bigger aeroplanes um, going into 70 or 90 seats. Uh, those aeroplanes are still operating today successfully and there's a demand and a use. I was only in San Francisco the other week and as I landed from, uh, from Frankfurt, all I could see was Beach 1900Ds, Jetstream 41, Saar 340s, Dash 8s. Those people are still operating those aeroplanes. If those aeroplanes were not needed, there was no market for those aeroplanes, no niche they wouldn't be operated. Similarly with some of the 50-seaters that are being forced to retire early. So we see an option in the replacement of the current global fleet, which is some 5,000 operational aeroplanes, so uh, turboprops and jets in that sort of 30 to 50-seat sector. So that's our number one area in the replacement of those um, aging programs. Uh, the second area that we see, and, and perhaps was never really envisaged in the days of Dornier and Fairchild Dornier is the fact that the 328 has proven to be a very good special mission aeroplane. As air ambulance, as a uh, medivac, as a coast guard, maritime patrol, and even now with the United States Air Force, we've got some 15 aeroplanes already in operational service with the squadrons, and more aeroplanes are being ordered and being delivered at the moment. So we see a lease of life or a new departure to the 328, very much in the special mission arena, and of course, the 328 is ideally suited for un unimproved runway performance, hot and high, relatively short field takeoff, and, and easy to maintain in first world and third world markets. So perhaps not originally envisaged, but the 328 has demonstrated a sort of uh, new market segment that is open above the, the traditional passenger regional um, airline operation. No question. Yes, really. Uh, so you are going to move all the tooling uh uh, instruments and so on out of uh, over Faf and Hofen to, to Turkey? That's right. We will probably produce two or three aeroplanes initially in Germany yes. just while we go through some of the recertification and testing to make sure that um, where we put new cockpit in and some of the other upgrades that we're working on, function, fit and form, certification, it's easy to do that in Germany where we have the experience and the knowledge initially while the facility in Turkey is being developed and then we will set up the full assembly facility will be down in uh, in Turkey with any necessary tooling. In Istanbul or? It'll be in Ankara. Oh, Ankara. John, did you have a question? Yes. Yeah, John. Uh, John Arthur with the Wall Street Journal. Can you detail your, your further plans for industrializing this and standing up a supply chain that that can meet what you say is the demand for this? Is there a plan? Can you tell us a little bit about the 628 jet and how you're actually going about financing this project and, and getting the, the 328 jet back in regular production? Okay, well, let me start with you. 
point on the supply chains, and I think that's a pretty important uh, point. Uh, one of the discussions we had with the government in Turkey is about the fact that as a new, a relatively new player, even though Turkey has a very good experienced manufacturing capability with TAI and other people, as you'll know from any manufacturer, managing the supply chain and getting that right is, the, is the, probably the number one risk and priority in any new aircraft program. So with the 328, of course, we have an established vendor base, we have established players, and one of the opportunities that gives us in Turkey is to use that, to leverage that vendor base for the 628 program. The partners that we have on the 328, we would hope and expect would be our partners going forward on the 628 program. So actually having a supply chain that's confident about who it's dealing with, that they've got sound economic plans and a business case going forward, are certainly going to be more bought into supporting a new program like the 628 than they are if it's just a clean sheet, perhaps a, a pie in the sky, we must build our own aeroplane. And I'm pleased to say somewhere in the audience uh, is our largest vendor on the program, Pratt & Whitney, and uh, we hope obviously move forward with people like Pratt and our existing vendors on the 328 program. So in terms of industrialization, we also have a plan for industrialization in Turkey, which is one of the spin-off benefits for the government in terms of using local Turkish vendors like TAI and others to perform and participate in the program, particularly where we don't have necessarily an incumbent vendor today or we have the opportunity to change uh, a vendor, particularly on airframe, wing, those sort, of, uh, those sort of components. In terms of your question on funding, uh, the program is, well, the, the company is a fully commercial company, it's a standalone entity. Uh, we will need to live or die by the aeroplanes that we sell in the marketplace and those we persuade to buy the aeroplanes. Uh, we're fortunate the government is helping by putting its provisional launch order 50 uh, jet aeroplanes together, which gives us the kickstart we need to, to move forward with the program. Um, on the 328, as far as the 628 is concerned, we've agreed, uh, part of our MOU with the government, to get launch funding from the government to start developing a 628 program um, in Turkey using locally based designers, locally based engineers. And of course, we will move forward with what exact market needs there are for that. But SNC are participating as a major funder. And of course, it's uh, facilitated our whole program by having the Turkish government through its own agencies giving this initial launch order of the first 50 aeroplanes. In, in the first 50, it, are they acting as a, a leasing <coughs> en entity? Or how, I mean, obviously, you want to get them into revenue service. Absolutely, we'd like to get them into revenue service. Um, I guess the government will have various options, whether it keeps them all for domestic Turkish use, whether that be military or civil, or whether in fact it uses any of those to start exporting. Our plan certainly is to make sure that the aeroplane is sold outside of Turkey. This is not just about fulfilling a local Turkish demand. So the government is very much interested in the export capabilities and export order book, whether it's through government credits and guarantees of the leasing model as have been done by Embraer or, or Bombardier in the past or with its outright sale or dealing via leasing companies who take on that, uh, that, that mission, if you like, on behalf of the, of the program. Yes. Sorry, Tim Robbins, no, it's so it could be a mix of a special mission and passenger <coughs> variants for the first 50 then? Uh, at the moment we're looking at the first 50 is passenger aeroplanes. I yep. mean, we already have inquiries about special mission in its broadest sense, right through from use by uh, special forces, right through to police or air ambulance. I think we need to just pan that out and see how the program develops. But to start with, we'd like to build a sort of fairly standard 32-seat aeroplane, get our vendor supply chain established, and then we can do variations on green aeroplanes, either in Turkey or elsewhere, uh, depending on the customers. Bernie. 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 Um, you're going to produce both the turboprop and the jet in the 328? We are indeed. We're going to start with the jet, just to be clear. This yeah. is where I was going. What, and so what are your timelines for the jet and the turboprop being delivered? And also, are, they, are both of those involved in the deal with uh, 50 Turkey? Uh, the deal with Turkey is for 50 jets initially, although we're receiving other inquiries from within Turkey for turboprop and jet variants. Um, Timeline-wise, we hope in three years to have 18 months to, to, to 36 months again um, our first jet aeroplanes assembled in Turkey and going into service. Sorry, do you repeat that timeline again? Yeah, 18 to 36 months. It's really how quickly we get the facility up, we get the vendor supply chain, 
switched on, but we want to put our first uh, aeroplanes into service in 18 to 36 months time scale. And that'll be the jet? That'll be the jet, the 328 jet with the upgraded avionics. Um, one of the suppliers that we finally select. And for the turboprop? Uh, I'd expect the turboprop will be not too far behind because we're more or less using the same airframe, same fuselage, etc., same cockpit avionics. It'll just be a power plant variation, although my engineers will tell me that sounds very easy for me to say. There'll be some uh, engineering that goes behind that, uh, but we'll start with the with the jet. So the turboprops, I would hope, if, we, if the order book fulfills and we can ramp up, I would have thought in the sort of... Um, 36 to sort of 48 month period. Yeah, that 18 to 36 months, that's for production from Turkey. That's assembly of aeroplanes in Turkey. That's yeah. setting up an, a, an assembly line in yeah. Turkey. Your first few for, for yeah. recertification in Germany. First few will be done in Germany for recertification. Um, yeah. That's correct. What will be your yes. production uh, rate uh, starting for five, uh, six planes a year? Yes, I mean, I think, I think we're fairly modest and realistic yep. in our uh, expectations. I mean, our hope is to do between three and five aeroplanes in the next 24 months, which will probably be done in Germany, which will be part of our certification path. And Outside of two prototypes? Yes, our upgrade path uh, and demonstrators. And then we expect to ramp up to about 20 to 30 aeroplanes a year, probably by year four or five. So I think we're not going to put uh, crazy numbers out there, something that looks sensible and realistic. And of course, you know, our, our vendor network, we know, are busy supplying lots of other manufacturers, so they're not just waiting to switch on at five minutes notice. So that, that's the sort of production rate we're looking at. It's too early to say about the price, of course. But way too early to say about the price. But it'll, of course, I mean, we're not, uh, we're not naive. We know it needs to be competitive. We know where the 3 to 8 was pitched previously. We know what we perceive as may be seen as competitive out there. And uh, we'll only need to set the, the price uh, in the right zone for the operator, both capital cost, operating cost, um, and, and obviously maintenance cost and cost of ownership. So I think we've got pretty good experience on what that should look like. Victoria. Victoria Moss with ATW. Um, you've given us your um, outlook for the actual production. What about the outlook for actual orders? So how many orders, how soon? Well, I'm hoping after this show, lots of orders very soon. But uh, <laughs> since we're only just released from embargo to announce this this venture with the, with the government, uh, what I can tell you is we've had existing customers, um, because these things always leak out, we've had existing customers and potential new customers already contacting us about um, aeroplanes. So we will ramp up our marketing effort in the next 12 to 18 months once we're confident about the timescales on the production facility. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves in terms of uh, going out selling and then having a disappointment by not being able to deliver uh, to plan or to the uh, expectation of the market. Thank you. And one follow-on from that, sir, um, is um, how much commonality will there be uh, for pilots between the existing 328s and your future 328? That's a good question. Uh, the flight deck on the current 328 is pretty advanced. The Primus wants a full glass cockpit. Uh, we will be continuing with the full glass cockpit. Um, I think I've got York here. York? Yeah. Perhaps just take that so much. the commonality will be basically one-to-one -one replacement, uh, which means the total prop and the jet will be fairly similar, except of course the performance uh, information and certain systems deviation. So we're looking for a full commonality of both variants. Mm -hmm. Emery, you have a yeah, question? Thank you. Thank you. I understand that you're going, you're going to keep your supplier base for P28. What about 6 to 8? Do you have any plans to expand your supplier base towards Turkey in 6 to 8? Yeah, I mean, I think very much so. I mean, the 3 to 8, it makes no real sense to start changing vendors significantly right now, although there are some opportunities with some of the airframe components to look at potential new vendor partnerships in Turkey and elsewhere. I think the 6 to 8, as, as you've seen, is very much to be the first indigenous aeroplane which we want to design, certify and build in Turkey. So we're very much looking to, to develop the Turkish network. Maybe, Cem, you yeah, yeah. throw in. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Cem. Uh, thank you for the question. Actually, Turkey is, uh, you know, would like to design and build uh, an ind indigenous uh, passenger aircraft and 628 will be that aircraft. So what we are trying to do is to acquire as much as uh, know-how from existing configuration 
But then over the time, you know, optimizing, you know, the cost, uh, time to market, all these uh, criteria uh, help as much as local co content as possible. Actually, uh, Turkish government universities are all working on how to accelerate existing work in Turkey for, uh, you know, to produce for 628. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for David? Ayşe Akal'ın Defense Working Magazine. Uh, could you please tell us about uh, the formation of your new investments? What will be the shareholders or uh, what is the schedule to establishing the facility? Can you say that yeah. as well? Okay. Um, it is, you know, uh, we just announced today that the, a Turkish company called Tiarjet Havacılık Teknolojileri Ayşe has been established in Turkey. Uh, and you know, it's just, um, I mean, the organization is just being uh, worked on. And then within the six months, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, we're already in discussions with our government for the best place to establish the hangar and the design office. And I think before uh, the end of the year, we'll, we'll be starting uh, working in our hangar and also our design office. Thank you. But it will be an anchor. Yeah. Not Istanbul. <laughs> well, I was going to ask what, what, why Ankara, when Istanbul is so. Are, are the local government um, not enticements? What's the word? Well, uh, it's incentive. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're just uh, looking from the uh, perspective of existing engineering infrastructure. Uh, and uh, as of today, it looks like you know Ankara is the best place uh, to start working on, and then maybe later on uh, we can have an office in Istanbul. But right now, is Ankara is, is a place to start. And you will have a runways like in Oberpfaffenhofen, where you can, you know, take off yeah, and land your. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll be at an established airfield yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah, it won't be that green field. It'll be uh, okay. at an existing uh, developed runway. Okay. You have the benefit of starting with an existing design that was once in production. Uh, you go. From what you offered is that the 628 jet, as far as we can tell, is just a number. What is the 628 jet? How do you envision that? And how do you ultimately hope to overcome the obstacles that COMAC, MRJ, their foot are having right now in their terms of their schedules and the introduction of, of their, their aircraft when there they're, isn't necessarily a a heritage of integration and final assembly in Turkey? I think that's a, that's a very good question. It's one of those that we've agonized with and discussed at length with the Turkish government. Um, I mean, in terms of what is the 6 to 8, other than just a number, I mean, it'll be in the 50 to 70 seat range is our um, expectation. We will build on the DNA and the heritage of the 328, so it will be a high wing airplane, it'll be multi-mission, we will look at having the opportunity to have dual power plant selection jet and turboprop. And we'll be looking, of course, with the high wing, we're looking at technologies such as the geared fan, which a high wing uh, lends uh, itself to. And we'll be looking for using, again, an unimproved runway uh, environment. So very much uh, taking the sort of heritage of the 328. Your, your follow-on question is the, is the challenge. And I mentioned in my previous answer, I think perhaps to your question about building the vendor supply chain and the network, I mean, gaining the confidence of the vendors, getting them involved in the 628, which we will start almost in, in, immediately in parallel with the 328 relaunch, is that so by the time we get to 2023, which is our uh, planned rollout date for the first aeroplane, we will be working with established vendors who know us, who have a background and experience with us, the technology, and we're not looking to create uh, cutting edge technology for make all that. We're looking to build the aeroplane around known technologies, known vendor, um, we will, of course, have the challenge, as you say, about uh, integrating it, and we have looked around at the, uh, the hard time, shall I say, that other, other manufacturers have had, especially bringing a, green she a clean sheet aeroplane to market. And that was really why we've done this two-step approach using three, the 328 as a stepping stone for training the engineers, the certification, understanding what EAS or FAA regulations are, so that the people actually work in the program in Turkey are familiar with the regulatory needs, the quality needs, because so much about an aeroplane is about the paper rather than the metal. And um, that's really the key point to find how we get it through ERS or through FAA 
Um, so very much we think using the 328 as a, I'll call it a training vehicle, um, is going to be what's going to give the 6 to 8 the opportunity to get there a lot faster than perhaps some of the other products uh, that you've seen on the market recently that are still trying to get to their end goal date or their revised end goal date. So that's really why we've taken this approach with the government and just starting with the 628 clean sheet. We've decided 328 is our learning learning curve and helps us establish that vendor uh, supply chain or re-establish the case of 328. Um, yes, for the um, 6 to 8, are you going to do the same thing as the 3 to 8, so it will be jet first and then prop? Uh, yes, in all likelihood we'll probably start with one uh, power plant type, and that will probably be, as I mentioned, we're looking at the, the turbofan technology at the moment, mm -hmm. and we'll go that route. Okay, and um, do you envisage that the ultimate family is going to be basically four member with the two jets and the two props? That's what we would envisage, yeah, we, and we think, obviously, certain certain power plant options suit different needs. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we want to keep the same uh, arrangements we have with the 328. So there's no plan for any other variant that would be built into the family at a later place or anything? Like well, we'll be very happy if we get the 628 variant <laughs> in the time scale uh, and the budget that we set. So, uh, no, we're not going to start building uh, 728s, 928s or any other, uh, anything else. We're going to be, say, fairly focused. Um, what was, let's say, the final push to get a restart in Turkey and not in Germany or for Pfaffenhofen? Was it a workforce available, the cost, uh, cheaper cost, uh, subsidised? Uh, uh, well, you probably know in Ober Pfaffenhofen, it's very difficult to get any employees in Ober Pfaffenhofen uh, and it's not the perfect part of the world to start an aeroplane production facility for lots of logistic reasons. Um, but the real reason is we we always knew this would need an industrial partner, we'd need a large customer like a government. And we've been approached by a number of governments over the last two or three years as the 328 has become successful again, let me say, or uh, been recognised as, as a successful platform. So Turkey have been talking to us for four or five years, so it's, this isn't just uh, something that's happened overnight. We've had a long relationship with, uh, with, with Turkey. SNC already have a relationship in Turkey. And a number of things came into alignment that actually meant this was uh, the right way forward. The one so brought to the yeah. But we'll be, you know, we'll be creating more work in Germany, more workforce in Germany, will be more workforce in the United States. So it's not a one-dimensional uh, program. But the assembly will be in Turkey, strongly recognised with that uh, that location.